Uh, so Charlie's first question is in recognition of the fact that many of the individuals who work at Tyson may be from immigrant communities. And how are we taking special steps to reach out to them in order to be especially uh, solicitous and try to prevent transmission within the home? Uh, and the answer, Charlie, is that we're doing a few things. The first is, of course, in recognition that there may be individuals for whom English is not the first language. We're trying to make sure that we've got a, a, an array of medically certified translators who are ready to help us make sure we can communicate clearly and accurately with folks. These conversations are difficult enough and technical enough, uh, but when you add on an additional layer of someone for whom English may not be their first language, uh, words like quarantine and coronavirus may not translate so well. That's why we make sure we use certified medical translators for that work, not just someone we happen to know who might speak the language. Uh, but the other thing, Charlie, that we're thinking about in any situation like this, not just specific to Tyson, is making sure we think about those for whom cases might live with. Close contacts, household contacts. Uh, and there, in this situation, we want to be especially concerned, given that immigrants are often uh, disproportionately affected, as we've talked about, with these, with these types of situations, and potentially at higher risk for discrimination. We're also making sure we ask about other things that might be going on. For example, making sure we ask whether they've got safe, stable housing. Uh, because if they don't, that's a, that's, that's a problem not just for them, but certainly something we want to think about as a public health system as well. So we are trying to take those factors into play as we go about our contact tracing.